welcome to you if you are watching online. God bless you, and I pray that God will pour out his Holy Spirit on us this morning. We're just going to sing, Holy is the Lord. What do I mean saying just? We're not just going to sing anything. We're going to praise the Lord, and we're going to sing, Holy is the Lord. We stand and live for the joy of the Lord. We bow down and worship you now. How great, how awesome is he. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled. start. 
Welcome everyone this morning. It's great to have you with us. If you are a visitor, you're especially welcome. And if you're joining us online, welcome to you as well. Um, my name is Rob. I'm one of the elders here. And uh, yeah, it's great to have this time of worship with you today. We're going to continue in a moment to worship, during which time if you feel God leads you to, uh, to a scripture or gives you a picture or uh, a tongue, something you feel you want to share uh, with us all, then please come find me at the front. We'd love to incorporate that in part of our worship. Uh, Later, Ken's going to be coming to um, preach to us this morning, continuing our series on Galatians, which is exciting. And um, uh, also, the kids will go out for their activities, and I'll tell you when. Um, Just before we go into another song, I just want us to um, just encourage us to prepare our hearts as we worship um, before we go into the next one. And I want to read to you from uh, Philippians 4, um, familiar words to many. And it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So let's just um, prepare our hearts, as um, perhaps Andy, if you want to start playing. Let's just prepare our hearts and think about those things that are worthy of praise. It doesn't say just turn up with a smile on your face and pretend everything's fine if it's not. It says come to God with your prayers. God will promise to bring you peace. It says rejoice always. So I just encourage you, if there's anything that's robbing you of joy today, bring it to God. Come now, bring it to God, and prepare your hearts as we worship. If there's something that's really just cha- just challenging in the moment, bring it to God. Think about the things that are worthy of praise. Think about the things that we can be thankful for as we engage with worship. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll go into a time of worship. Yeah, Father God, we thank you that you are with us always. We thank you that you promise to bring peace to us. We thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you love us. We thank you there is nothing that's out of your control. We thank you there is nothing you can't do. And we come and worship you today, Lord. You are the one who is worthy of praise. Help us this morning to prepare our hearts and fix our minds on who you are and what you have done through Jesus. We bless you and we say, Lord, be with us this morning. Bring us peace and joy today. Amen. Hallelujah. 
sing, sing, sing. See you. 
flesh cry out, we hear the living God, your spirit water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me, I will draw near to you. One day in your house, better is one day in your course, thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your course, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your course, thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your course, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your course, thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousand elsewhere, thousand elsewhere. See la 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 your voice to the Lord. Bring your own personal praise. trying the right key, shall we?
Everybody. Rob earlier was talking about things that stop us from rejoicing and I feel I've just got something that we can all rejoice about. A couple of days ago I received a text from my sister-in-law who is very immobile and she's 91 and she said, praise the Lord, I've just led my carer to the Lord. Amen? Oh, isn't that brilliant? So you guys that are over 70, 80, whatever, the Lord is still with you and this has still got much for you to do. Amen?
to go out to your groups I think that song is our prayer for you that you would come to love God too I just want to pray for our kids as they go out Father we thank you for every one of the children we have in this church and all our young people too we just pray that they would have a fantastic time in their activities this morning that they would meet with you and have so much fun finding out more about you Amen let's continue to worship
a gift from the Holy Spirit we call tongues and we're just going to wait for the interpretation
be afraid of silence because you're just going to wait. My heart and soul thirsts after you, Lord. My heart rejoices in the place that you take me to daily. You are my King of kings and my Lord of lords. You have established the heavens as we have sang this morning. And my heart beats with yours. You are my inspiration. You are my wanting to get up in the morning. My wanting to lay at bed at night and dream of the encounters that we have had during the day. My soul thirsts for you. My hunger is for more of you. Does your soul hunger for more of the Lord? Just leap into it sing this again
lost in wonder, lost in love. I'm lost in praise forevermore because of Jesus' unfailing love. I am forgiven, I am restored. Jesus, we were the lost sheep, lost without you, and you found us and brought us into a relationship, and now we're lost in wonder. We're lost in our love for you. We just thank you, Jesus. It's all because of you, not because of us. We worship you because you did it all by going to the cross for us. May we never lose that awe and love for you and thankfulness. We're so grateful, and we worship you today, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you to uh, Andy and the worship team leading us this morning. And we've got a few notices, but before then, I'm just going to invite Kurt up. Um, Kurt felt really prompted to pray for Tom and Sarah and the family. Um, many of you will know Tom was one of our elders, um, and Tom and Sarah and their children have moved to Germany recently. They felt prompted by God to go and uh, to move to Hernhut um, for a year, and to um, yeah, they pr- felt prompted by God to go, and so they had to respond and, and, and move away. So, um, if you want to find out more about what they're doing and why they went, um, there is a blog on our website um, for those who don't know. But uh, Kurt just wanted, felt prompted to come and pray for them. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, we heard or read from Tom that they are in a situation where they wait for the visa to come through, and this is something really uh, serious, and, uh, and they ask for prayer. And I just want to encourage you now to, to uh, pray for them and to Expect that God will answer these prayers and that they can stay, because it's uh, it's hanging in the air. But God knows and God sees and God listens. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are knowing him. You know him. Their family. So we do lift up Tom and Sarah and the family before you. We just thank you, Lord, that they are such a wonderful example of a godly family in this church. And uh, thank you for the example that they have led to us of being prompted by you and responding in obedience to what you've called them to do. And we do pray. Well, we thank you firstly for everything you've done already and put into place for them. There were so many uh, things that had to line up for them to go and you answered all their prayers. And we just pray for the next one now, this visa, that you would answer their prayer and put it in place that they can continue the work that they feel called to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kurt. Great. Okay, so a few notices um, before Ken comes up. Firstly, um, the uh, offering uh, box is going to come around. Um, if you're visiting here today, please don't feel any obligation to give. Uh, we wouldn't expect you to. We won't stop you, but we don't expect it. Um, thank you to all those in the church who come regularly and who do give regularly. Uh, everything you give um, is used to do for the ministries in the church, um, for everything that we do here at the church is, is through the giving uh, of this church. So thank you so much to all who give. And behind me, hopefully, some different ways that you can give. 
Um, at the end of the service, we'll have our welcome zone in the corner. Uh, again, if you're visiting today, if it's your first time or first few times, uh, we'd love to get to know you more. We'd love to find out about you and tell you more about us as a church. And we have a welcome zone in this corner where we'll provide you with a tea and coffee, biscuits, so that you don't need to uh, queue up with the rest of us. Um, and so, yeah, welcome zone at the end if you're visiting. We'd love to meet you more. Okay, a couple of things coming up. Um, this Tuesday, 29th, is our fun morning, um, led by Ello and a team of children's workers. So it's going to be, it's back-to-back, -back two sessions, 9.15 and 11.30. Um, they've always been so popular and well attended, and I know the children have so much fun coming to these events. Um, and especially parents, I know, love having something to do in half term. So... If you haven't yet booked in with your kids, please book in. Um, there's a QR code there, and also um, I think it's on social media as well and online. So if you've got kids and you want something to do on Tuesday, bring them for our fun morning. Next Sunday is our Breakthrough Prayer Meeting. Um, we do this every month. We meet together to pray. Uh, we really do believe in the power of prayer. Um, we want to bring everything to God and ask his uh, leading to us and his blessing and what we feel led to do. So please come with us to pray. Um, the last one we had last month was really well attended. It was fantastic. A really lovely time of, of prayer. Lots of really fun activities and different ways to, to engage in prayer. So please come this uh, next one. Um, and this one's our special one. This is our AGM as well, um, our annual, gen annual general meeting that we do as a charity. And it's a chance to hear from the trustees, a chance to hear a financial update as well, um, and uh, find out what uh, we feel led about for the next year. And it's also a chance to thank God. Um, this time, well, in the last year, a lot has changed, hasn't it? You know, so much has changed physically in this building. Um, a huge change physically here in this building. And we want to thank God for that, for the provision that he has provided. Because there was a time when we thought it would just be impossible to do, but actually God has provided. And so we want to thank God for that as well and pray over the next um, phase as well. So please join us next Sunday to pray. Um, also in November, we have our baptisms. Our next um, baptism Sunday will be Sunday the 24th. Um, it was such a joy, wasn't it, to baptize um, last month and uh, to see two young people coming and sharing the testimony of what God has done in their lives and being baptized publicly. So if you have not yet been baptized, um, we would say as a church, the Bible is clear. It says, believe and be baptized. So if you're a believer and you have put your trust in Christ and you've not yet been baptized, then we would encourage you to be baptized. So if you'd like to find out more, please uh, Come speak to me at the end or one of the other elders or contact the office and we'd love to chat that through with you more. Okay, last one. Um, Manny is going to share on this one. Where is Manny hiding? There he is. Uh, so Manny, as uh, Sai said last week, is going to be heading up our new 18s to 30s group. So Manny's going to explain what that looks like. Yes, thank you. Uh, morning, everyone. So this will be an 18 to 30s group. Um, and I'm saying 30s loosely, so... We, we won't be checking IDs, so <laughs> if your ID says you're, you're not in the group, but you feel you're 30 or within that group, um, you're welcome. Uh, so if next, I'll be around or at the back somewhere uh, when at the end of the service. If you'd like to, to come, just find me so we have an indication for numbers so we know what to do for food. Um, and so Sai... Um, and Anna had this initiative to start and pull the group together. So we want to meet everyone, just have a social group, have, just create a family, um, create a zone for us, because then we would have people with like-minded like -minded people. Uh, we might have some people come speak to us. Uh, we might have prayer days. We might have um, games and fun and different occasions. Um, I believe uh, God has released a light for us. Um, and as we respond um, to this, he, he will not only do exceedingly, but um, abundantly as well. Um, and just before I leave, I want to uh, leave you with this word, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 5. And it says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. Um, we are many parts in one body and we all belong to each other. So let's respond, let's, let's support each other and come in and have a body of Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Manny. I want to feel like you're in the 18s and 30s again. Oh. Yeah. Great. Um, it's time to welcome Ken up. Let's welcome Ken up as he brings God's words to us. I think I'm going to be in on the 18 to 30s. No, I can't, no. 
No. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Um, are you sitting comfortably? Good. We'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we want you this morning, and we want your word. We want you to speak to us. We want the memorable factor of the next 30 minutes to be that God was in the room speaking to me. So we surrender this time to you. Have your way, please, amongst us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to look at Galatians 4, verses 8 to 20. And um, I'm going to read it to you to begin with. We're on a series going through the book of Galatians. And um, I suppose um, a chapter that really um, is, is so astounding is chapter 3, the beginning of chapter 3, where Paul overspills his emotion as a parent to this church as a person who loved this church and longed for this church to enjoy the freedom of being children of God. He says to them in chapter 3, verse 1, You foolish Galatians, who has hypnotized you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was vividly portrayed as crucified? I only want to learn this from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? And he's pointing back to a time which is alluded to in the verses we're going to read today where, where Christ revealed himself to this church or this group of people who were mostly Gentiles. And these people saw the message. They understood it. And they got it right in their hearts. And they were set free, forgiven, totally restored in the presence of God. And now it's like they were going through another conversion a bad one, a conversion where now they become Christians. They had a whole new group of laws that they were trying to follow. People had come amongst them and said, if you want to be a, a, a follower of Jesus, you have to remember Jesus was a Jew and you have to do all the Jewish things. You've got to obey their festivals. You've got to obey their laws. You've got to go through all the special days. Actually, you need to be circumcised, all those things were being said to them. So now they'd come into this glorious freedom of being the children of God by faith in the finished work of Jesus. And now they're going through another conversion saying, oh, and now we've got to come under this heavy burden of you must do this, you mustn't do that, you've got to do this, you mustn't do that. And they'd taken on another law on top of their faith uh, in Jesus alone. It's faith in Christ alone that sets us free. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thing? So we start in verse 8 where Paul makes this point again. He says, but in the past, when you didn't know God, you were enslaved to things that by nature are not gods. They had their own pagan gods. But now since you know God, or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again? To the weak and bankrupt elemental forces. Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? You observe special days, months, seasons and years. I'm fearful for you. That perhaps my labour for you has been wasted. It's like a parent talking to a child. I beg you, brothers, become like me. For I also became like you. He was a Jew that went and lived amongst the Gentiles, preaching faith in Christ alone. You've not wronged me. You know that previously I preached the gospel to you because of my physical illness. You did not despise or reject me through my physical condition, though my physical condition was a trial for you. On the contrary, you received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus himself. Whatever happened to this sense of being blessed, this sense of joy that you had? For I testify to you that if possible, you'd have torn out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? 
they are enthusiastic about you, talking about the Judaizers, but not for any good. Instead, they want to isolate you, so you'll be enthusiastic about them. No, it is not. No, it is always good to be enthusiastic about good, and not just when I'm with you. My children, I'm again suffering labour pains for you until Christ is formed in you. I would like to be with you right now and change my tone of voice because I don't know what to do about you. This is apparent, desperate for his children to be again as they were, trusting in Christ alone and rejoicing in God. I wanted to show you a sketch this morning, but I couldn't. It's the Harry Enfield sketch on Kevin the Teenager. Have you seen it? It's a wonderful sketch, just in case you haven't. It shows this picture of a young person who's 12 years old. And at 12 years old, they're very excited about being 13. And at one point, they're jumping on the sofa and saying, I'm going to be in 13 in five minutes, just five minutes' time. And they say, well, Mummy, Daddy, I'm going to be 13. And they're so friendly with their parents. They're like a normal human being. And then the clock strikes midnight and a metamorphosis takes place. Their arms grow longer, their hair comes out, their cap turns round and goes on the back and they slump over and they start to grunt. <laughs> it's a beautiful sketch. I couldn't show it because there's swearing in it, but it's a beautiful sketch. And somehow what happened with this church in Galatia is that they'd experienced a glorious transformation of becoming the opposite way round, children of God. And then because they added to the gospel that you need to obey all these laws, they had another metamorphosis where they were like people sitting a test, trying to pass an exam to be good enough for God. Nobody can pass that exam other than Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah, he sat the exam for me and he got 100% and he gave me his results. Praise the Lord. Whatever happened to your joy, whatever happened to that wonderful celebration of being children of God, the Bible says this, John 10, verse 10, the thief has come referring to Satan, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. He spoke to the disciples in John 15. He's saying, I want you to have the fullness of joy. It says about Jesus himself, the outstanding feature of Jesus as he walked this earth. Psalm 45, verse 7. He was anointed with the oil of joy and gladness above that of his fellow men. It stood out in him. He was a joyful man because he knew who he was in relation to his heavenly father. In Isaiah 12, a beautiful chapter, by the way, you should read the whole chapter sometime. It says in there, with joy, you will draw water out of the wells of salvation. Let's put it another way as the message does. It says, joyfully, you'll pull up buckets of water from the wells of salvation. And as you do it, you'll say, give thanks to God. Call out to his name. Ask him for anything. Shout to the nations. Tell them what he's done. Spread the news of this great reputation. You see what's happened to these people here in this chapter and has happened to some of you is you've caught up, got caught up with the ought to's. I really ought to share my faith. I really ought to go to that meeting today. Oh, I really ought to get up early and read my Bible. Oh, I really ought to be living a better life. Oh, I really ought to ring my sister and sort my problem out with her. Oh, I really ought to go to church this morning, even though I don't feel like it. Whatever happened to your joy, 
of salvation. I wanted that song. I asked Andy if we could have that song. I'm lost in wonder. I'm lost in praise. You chose the cross. It says in Hebrews 12, verse 2, for the joy that was set before him. Jesus chose the cross, enduring its shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Think of that. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy that was set before him? It wasn't the agony of the cross. It was you and me being children of God. Hallelujah. That was the joy that Jesus experienced as he went through to the cross. You know, I look at the story of the prodigal son. I love that story. I love that statue. It's in one of the churches in London, of the Holy Trinity, of the father and the son embrace. And have you seen it? It's a statue. You look it up. Um, Holy Trinity, there's a, a statue of the father embracing the son and totally enveloping him in his arms. But it's not him I want to refer to. He understood salvation. He had been forgiven. He'd been restored. He'd got his robe. He'd got his ring. He'd got his sandals on his feet. And there was a party celebrating. This son was lost. And now he's found. He was in danger. And now he's safe. He was miserable. And now he's got joy. And he's my child again. And he's in my home. It's the other son I want to think about. It's in Luke chapter 15, verse 25 to 32. It'd be good to turn to it. Because it helps us with this passage. Luke 15. In Luke 15, and in verse 25, it says, Now this older son was in the field. As he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants and asked what these things meant. The servant wanted to be in the party. (laughs) But he answered him. He said, your brother's here. He told him, your father slaughtered the fattened calf because he's got him back safe and sound. Then the older brother became angry and he didn't even want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But he replied to his father, look, I've been slaving, note the word, I've been slaving many years for you. And I've never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes, who's devoured your assets with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. And these are the words. They're the words for you. The words for you and for me this morning. Son, He said to him, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Hallelujah. That's the situation that you're in and I'm in. Because of Christ, we're with the Father and everything he has is ours. You know when you're slipping outside of the party, you start to get cynical. You feel outside of other people's celebration. You get judgy, just like the older brother. You get angry. Am I the only person that does anything in this church? You compare yourself to others. You feel lonely. And the truth that once was so personal is now out here somewhere. Instead of in here, somewhere. And you have dry eyes. You have dry eyes. The Father's pleading with you today. Now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Experience again the joy of your salvation.
You know, I really love this story of how the gospel came to the Galatians. And I want to insert a little side thing at the moment because it's relevant to some people here and some people who are listening over the internet. How did Paul come to preach to the Galatians? Well, he says he was ill. He had a sickness. He couldn't leave. He was unable to get away. And because he was unable to get away, rather than sitting there in his sickness, he realized that this difficulty was an opportunity for God. So he preached the gospel to them, and many got saved. It's there. We just read it. It's in the scripture that we've just read. And Paul talked about that difficulty another time in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He said he sought the Lord three times to take this difficulty away from him. But the Father answered him. God spoke to him and said, My strength is made perfect in your weakness so that the power of Christ can come through you. Hallelujah. If you're weak this morning, if you're sick this morning, we've just heard a testimony about somebody who needs a carer sharing Christ with their carer and their carer coming to Christ. I so enjoyed that testimony. Whatever circumstance you're in, God wants you to experience again the joy of your salvation. There's somebody I went to see. I don't want to give his name away. He was, he was very ill. He had cancer, and he was in the last stages. And he was a, a guy who um, was a very successful man. But he was dying fast. His bones were disintegrating. His shoulder had dislocated and broken because of the cancer in his bones. And I went to visit him, expecting to have to try and pick him up and lift his spirit and make him joyful again in his salvation. But I didn't need to do that. Because when I went in to see him, he prayed for me. And I came out overwhelmed again with my salvation. And I discovered that everybody that went to see him had the same experience. And his wife was shining, honestly. So much so that I said to him, how is your wife managing to shine like she is in these circumstances? And you, yourself. He said, first point that I'm going for here. He said, she's learnt to draw water from the right wells. She has learnt to draw water from the right wells. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, this morning, God wants to teach us to draw water from the right wells. These guys in the Galatian church had run into a problem. They'd started drawing water from the wrong well. The well of legalism and religion. Paul said this to the Corinthians, who had a similar problem. He said, I'm afraid for you that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He goes on to tell them, it's in, uh, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he goes on to tell them, other people have come to you, super apostles, and they've preached to you another message, and you've welcomed it, and you've drawn from it. But the message that Paul had was the simple message of faith in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation with nothing added to it. In this passage, Paul is trying to say to these people, look, who were your real fathers? Who were your real mothers? Why don't you draw water from their well? Why don't you listen to what they are saying? He's saying, I'm your father and your mother. He uses both expressions in the, in the verses we read. And he's saying, it's me that is breaking my heart over you. 
Let me ask us as a church. Where are we drawing our water from? I'm very worried for us. I mean, generally, not just this church. I saw it even when we, we visited friends in Canada. I saw it there even more. People drawing their teaching, drawing their water from the internet. From people you don't even know. You don't know how they treat their wives or their husbands. You don't know how their church is. You don't know how their kids are. You're definitely not going to get any pastoral support from them. Are they on their knees praying for you as you're watching them on the TikTok or the YouTube? What do you think? I don't think so. And in our age, it's become a thing. We get our teaching like squirrels, collecting from all over the place. Remember, Paul told these people, remember, I'm your father. It's interesting in the story that he tells of his sickness. He says to them about the relationship they formed. What a beautiful relationship that was formed between them. He says, you didn't put me down. You hosted me as a sick person. You treated me like an angel, or even as Jesus Christ himself. If you'd had your way, you'd have plucked your own eyes out and given them to me, which makes me think maybe, as an aside, maybe he had an eye problem. The very expression he uses here might suggest that. But in that, he says, in that experience, we were like this. You loved me and I loved you. And now because I'm telling you the truth that you need to get back to your basic salvation, you're getting cross with me and you don't like it. These super apostles aren't going to tell you the truth because they're gathering a crowd. Crowds come and go. But I love you, says Paul. And I won't be satisfied. I won't stop praying. I won't stop breaking my heart until Christ is formed in you. Recognize who your real fathers are and your real mothers. People who are selfless, who persevere for you, who tell you the truth and don't flatter you, who are not in it for themselves, but they're in it to see Christ in you. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing, but I believe Paul's alluding to in these verses, even in that very story, what they experienced in that salvation was the presence of God. God came to Galatia, not just Paul. God came to Galatia. God was amongst them. God opened their eyes. Even in that difficult situation, God opened their eyes. Learning to sit. This is point number two, by the way. It's not very structured this morning. <laughs> Learning to sit in the presence of God with the scriptures open. Get back to that time when you were in the presence of God with the scriptures open, seeing what God has to say about your salvation. See, in the presence of God, get this, it's really important, in the presence of God, I discover who I am, who I really am, in the presence of God. I'm a child of God. In the presence of God, I discover who he is, who God is. I enjoy God. I celebrate God. And I celebrate what he's done in our lives. And in the presence of God, I discover who we are, who we are, the family of God. So he's saying to these people to be in the presence of God with the scriptures open. I read it a few weeks ago and it's so, so right for this moment. Psalm 105 verse 4. Seek and deeply long for the Lord, for his strength, his power and his might. Seek and deeply long for his face and his presence continually. You know, um, I do feel sorry for Daniel. I really do. Daniel is our son, as you know. When he lived with us all the time, and even now sometimes on the weekend, it's such hard work for Daniel living with us. You can imagine, can't you? <laughs> but one of the difficulties is, and uh, by the way, it's so wonderful to have Tinker's Hatch people here today, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> You're really welcome. We're glad you made it. 
the calculator. And you will really identify with the story I'm going to tell. Daniel's life was a life of one word that he hates. Da Daniel hates this word. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The day would start. He, he was at college at the time. The day would start with, come on, Daniel, hurry up, get up, get up, get up. You need to get up. And then he's getting up. Hurry, Daniel, into the shower. Hurry, hurry. Don't stand in the shower dreaming. Don't have shower thoughts, as somebody calls them. Just get in the shower and get out of the shower, OK? And then you're rushing him out of the shower. No, come on, hurry up. Dry yourself, dry yourself. Stop doing this all the time. He loves doing this, you see, with the towel. He loves this. Anyway, so no, stop that. Just get your clothes on. Come on, pull your pants. Put, don't put two legs into one hole. Come on, get your, get your pants on. And he's there, and he's getting dressed. Hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And he's getting crosser and crosser and crosser. And saying, right, eat your breakfast. Hurry up, I better spread it for you. I haven't got time, I'll spread it for you. Now eat it, eat it, eat it. You'd have to eat it in the car. You drag him off to the college. He's eating his toast in the car. Saying, hurry up, finish. Oh, look, you've got it all over your face. Oh, I'm not going to clean your face. Come on, hurry, hurry, you're late. It's five past nine. You should be there at nine. Isn't that right, Daniel? <laughs> Horrible parents. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Dallas Willard says this, the greatest enemy of our time is hurry. Have you got that? The greatest enemy of our time is hurry. Learn to be in the presence of God with the scriptures open, enjoying God. That's what these people needed, to get back to what happened in those early days. There's a brilliant church in East Africa. I'm going to say it right from the front, say who they are too, because we know them on the inside and the outside. Brilliant church called Watoto. They send choirs all over the world doing things, ministering all over the world. And uh, Simon, Simon, Pastor Simon, his, his father was with us on one occasion with one of the leaders of that church. And he'd been to the church. That they, I mean, all over the East Africa, they have 42,000 people that meet. And um, he said to the leader, he said, what is the secret of Watoto Church? Why does it work? Why is it growing like it's growing? And the small groups, they have literally thousands of small groups. And the leader looked at him, and within half a minute, he'd got an answer. He said, the presence of God. The presence of God. We need to be in the presence of God. Somebody said, we will always reproduce in the culture around us the culture you cultivate within you. As we cultivate that celebration of our salvation before God alone, when we come together, it's the sum total of all our individual in awe of God and our own. And our meetings will bring many to salvation. Uh, Jack Deere said this. He said, the prominent difference... Look, I'm not beating anybody up with this. I'm saying it because it's true. That's all. The prominent difference between the early church and the Western church is that the early church spent the majority of time praying and the Western church spends the majority of the time talking in the presence of God. We enjoy salvation. We discover who we are. We discover more of who he is. And we celebrate more of who we are together in the presence of God. I want to say something about Spurgeon now, um, at this point. Spurgeon was alive in the 19th century, 1834 he was born. He started to preach when he was 16. By the time of his death in 1892, he preached 
3,600 sermons. Wow, that's some going. <laughs> and he published 49 volumes of commentaries, sayings, anecdotes, illustrations, and devotions. Regularly, he preached to 5,000 plus and often to 10,000. His largest congregation was 23,000. He started a Bible college training pastors. A group of pastors came. Oh, by the way, he was a very melancholy guy. In case you're thinking, I'm saying we've all got to be effervescent. I'm not at all. Um, Spurgeon, you really missed the point if you thought that. Spurgeon was a very melancholy guy, but he had great joy. Uh, for example, um, he used to preach for a whole period of years on one leg, preaching on one leg, because he had gout in the other leg. He couldn't stand on it, so he'd preach. You try it. Preaching on one leg. <laughs> I can't even do it. And so some people came to him, his fellow leaders came to him and said, Mr. Spurgeon, how can you preach standing on one leg all this time? You, you, you can't be preaching. You need to take a break. And Mr. Spurgeon laughed and said, well, I've never heard of legs preaching. And I don't have gout in my tongue. <laughs> so he continued to preach. A group of young pastors wanted to see his church the tabernacle, the metropolitan tabernacle. And, and they, they went there, they marveled, and he showed them around the whole thing, and they were just stunned by it. And, uh, and so Spurgeon said, actually, we haven't seen the boiler room yet. And they said, well, we'll skip the boiler room and just go home. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Spurgeon. He said, no, you must see the boiler room. So he took them to the basement. In the basement, they found a 100 people waiting on God on his presence in prayer. This, Spurgeon said with a grin, is my boiler room. <laughs> Whenever Spurgeon was asked the secret of his ministry, he always replied, my people pray for me. My people pray for me. Okay, the last point. The last point. Paul says to them in verse 19, my little children. Verse 19, let's read it together. My little children, I'm again suffering labour pains for you until Christ is formed in you. I think he's pointing them in a direction, the pre-teenage. <laughs> he's saying, get back to being children. Get back to that sense of adventure that we enjoyed together. Get back to kingdom exploits, looking for God incidences, looking for God opportunities, even in difficulty and in sickness. Let's read verse 12 and 13. My dear friends, what I'd really like you to do is try to put yourself in my shoes in the same extent that I was when I was with you. I put myself in your shoes. You were very sensitive and kind back then. You did not come down on me personally. You were well aware that the reason I ended up preaching to you was that I was physically broken and so prevented from continuing my journey. I was forced to stop with you, in fact. That's how I came to preach to you. Do you feel that sense of childlike faith in the difficulties of life? Looking for an opportunity for God. Waiting on God together. I'm going to stop there. I want us to spend five minutes, just five, in the presence of God. I'm going to pray and then we're just going to sit in the presence of God. You might want to lie on the floor. You might want to kneel. Whatever God's speaking to you, we're going to spend five minutes just in the presence of God. If you're a visitor here today, if you don't know Christ today, you can talk to God and he wants to speak to you today. Every one of us. We'll close our eyes so that we're not distracted <laughs> and let's be in the presence of God of God.
Whatever happened to that joy that you had? As we're still in the presence of God, maybe the band come up. song again because this is about losing our wonder <laughs> and we need to get it again the absolute wonder of who Christ is the absolute wonder of what he's done for us to be lost in love to be lost in praise forevermore regardless of what's going on around us so let's stand just let your heart be totally free in the presence of a living God and remember what it is that drew you to him in the first place. Surrounded you was mine. You 
not my will, but yours be done, you cry. Lost in wonder, lost in love, lost in praise forevermore. Because of Jesus, unfailing love, I am forgiven, I am restored. Lost in wonder, lost in love, lost in praise for evermore. Cast in pieces, unfailing love. I am forgiven, I am restored. I'm lost in wonder, lost in. Lost in praise forevermore Because of Jesus' unfailing love I am forgiven, I am restored I'd like us all to, uh, I'd like us all just to close our eyes please Could we all just close our eyes? Only with our eyes closed, we see God better. <laughs> As we're stood in the presence of God, if you're here this morning and you want to know this great salvation of God, you want to know what it is we're getting excited about here, I just want you to raise your hand because I want to pray specifically for you. If that's you this morning, just raise your hand. If you'd like to know Christ this morning, yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, yes, that's lovely. Anybody else? Anybody else? You want to know Christ this morning? You want to know what it is we're all getting so excited about? Well, what is it? It's knowing God through Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray now for you. Let's all be in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for all those who have their hand raised. Pray you'd come by your Holy Spirit and show them Jesus. All that Jesus has done for them. May they meet Jesus right now. May they know your forgiveness your washing and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their heart, making them a child of God. Just receive that salvation from God. And those of us that have got a bit boring and religious and heavy, where is that joy? Why don't you raise your hand so I can pray for you? If you need that joy back, not that sense of, I've been slaving away all this time, but that sense of, oh, it's so good to be a child of God. If that's you, raise your hand. I'd like to pray for you right now. Just raise your hand if you've got into that. In Jesus' name, I pray for your release from religiousness and from bondage that you would know the joy of being a child of God again a simple joy of a child entering your life again a spring in your step and a song in your heart and that liberty again from being in slavery but being a child in Jesus' name Amen. It's just one more thing. Sorry. I said only one thing to Rob. It's one more thing that's coming to me. Let's stand in the presence of God, eyes closed. If you know it's been a long time since you were in the presence of God on your own, scriptures open, open heart, just seeking God himself on your own. If you know it's been too long 
and you want today to ask for God's help to do that again as you used to, just raise your hand. I want to pray that release for you as well. I pray in Jesus' name that you would know a new release being alone with God, finding time to sit in the presence of God, to enjoy him forever, and to recognize that's the heart of Christianity, enjoying God every day. May God show you a way to make a space for that time alone with him, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to sing that chorus once more. Just stay in this place. Lost in wonder, lost in love, lost in praise for evermore. Cause of Jesus, unfailing love, I am forgiven, I am restored because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, I am restored. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, I am restored. Thank you, everyone. We're going to bring our uh, meeting to a close now. Um, just to remind you, we have our welcome zone in the corner if you're visiting. Um, also, in this corner here, there'll be people to pray for you. If there's anything that Ken said that you want to respond to, please come forward for prayer. And uh, life group leaders and pastoral teams, you can be ready to come pray for people. Um, and if there's anything else you want prayer for, please come forward. We're going to have tea and coffee over here in a moment. Um, and if you could help us by taking the tags off, that would be fantastic. And last thing, someone, I've been handed a set of keys. If you've lost your keys, I've got them. Possibly unless you lost them somewhere else. Have a fantastic week. Take care, everyone. Thank you.